Ukraine is preparing for renewed Russian assaults along its front lines. That's according to a report from the UK's Defence Ministry. Fortifications likely include anti-tank obstacles, trenches and minefields. The report says Ukraine's stalled counter-offensive last year has forced its military into a more defensive footing. Kupiansk in the Kharkiv region was occupied in the first days of the full-scale invasion, but was recaptured by Ukrainian forces after almost six months. DW visited the town to see how residents are preparing for the threat of a renewed invasion. Air raid sirens are part of everyday life for the 3,500 people remaining in Kupiansk. Before Russia's invasion, there were 10 times as many people here. This hospital is the only intact medical facility in the town. But much of it has been destroyed. Only a fifth of the doctors remain and are forced to work in improvised conditions. We have lived through the occupation. We have lived through the deoccupation. We lived in basements, in corridors, on the floor when there was shelling. We didn't leave, we got used to it. Well, as long as there were rockets and mortars, but when the bombing started, we were afraid too. Tetiana believes that the Ukrainian armed forces will hold Kupiansk, but she's ready to leave if the fighting intensifies. She's afraid to live through another occupation. Members of the search and rescue group Roses on the Hand evacuate people from the front. There are more than 60 volunteers in the Roses on the Hand team. They do not receive a salary for their work, and most hold down full-time jobs. They say they are motivated by the desire to help, despite the risk to their lives. We had a big influx in summer and early autumn. Back then, each team would take 150 to 200 people per month. Then there was some kind of decline. Now the shelling has started again. And a lot of people, every day someone dies or even several people. The rumors of an attack have started to spread. That's why people are leaving more often. On the outskirts of Kupiansk, Alexander sees off Nadia. In autumn, she moved to the city from the village of Petropavlivka, which was almost completely destroyed. Now she's afraid to stay in Kupiansk. My son said, Mom, leave, it's going to be hell here. Oh my God, he said, there will be a second Avdivka. I didn't think so. I was thinking, okay, maybe God will take us away. You pray every day. For Nadia and others like her, life on the front line has become too dangerous. They're traveling further from the Russian border in a desperate search for safety as the war drags on. Mike Martin is a senior fellow in war studies at King's College London. What would it mean if Kupiansk were to be retaken? So Kupiansk is a uh, town or city uh, on uh, quite a wide body of water that acts as a, as a natural defensive bulwark to that whole region around Kharkiv that the Ukrainians took back in September 22. So if it were to fall, and it is quite difficult because it is well defended and it has this natural water feature to defend it, then that would open up the area behind it to Kharkiv, which is the second biggest city in Ukraine. How has Ukraine's army been preparing to fend off this Russian advance? So uh, your listeners will be aware that the Ukrainians are short of uh, ammunition and supplies from the West. And so uh, they have been focusing on actually doing what the Russians have been doing over the last year, which is digging deeper trenches and fortifications and trying to create obstacles uh, in depth. So you have several layers of trenches going backwards uh, that will slow the Russian advance. And I would imagine that around Kupiansk, particularly with that water feature, it's going to be very, very hard for the Russians to take it. After his election victory, Russia's Vladimir Putin talked about creating a buffer zone on Ukrainian territory. Can you tell us more about that? 
Absolutely. So uh, over the last couple of months, uh, as those supplies have dried up, Ukraine has looked to where it can keep the momentum up in the war. And one of those areas is attacking uh, oil refineries and population, uh, Russian troops within Russia. And because of that, the, Putin is arguing that a whole area of Russian uh, Ukrainian territory um, along the Russian border needs to be held as a buffer zone. But at the moment, if you look at where Russian troops are within Ukraine, they probably only hold about half that territory. They need to, you know, the Ukrainian-Russian border stretches all the way almost to Kyiv again. And so if the Russians want to create that buffer zone, they have to retake a lot of territory, almost all the way to Kyiv. So trying to recreate that area uh, that they had in the initial invasion uh, that they lost very, very quickly after the initial invasion. So what are Ukraine's chances then uh, in, in preventing such a buffer zone being set up? So Ukraine's fortunes over the, the near term rest on two things. One is uh, the number of uh, troops that they can raise from their own population. And there's a bill at the moment being discussed in the Ukrainian parliament about how they manage their conscription efforts. And the other, of course, is Western supplies, particularly things like artillery shells. And as we know, that's all being held up at the moment because the Americans are tied up in, in American domestic politics. So if Ukraine does have those things, raises its own troops and it has Western supplies, it will have no problem holding off these Russian attacks. Um, if it doesn't have those things, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for them eventually to hold back Russian forces because they are uh, so much more numerous uh, they care so little about their own casualties and they have much greater supply lines. So, Mike, is there any more to Ukraine's strategy moving forward apart from those two points you mentioned? So Ukraine is, is playing a waiting game. Um, uh, they're waiting effectively for the outcome of the US presidential election, which if Trump gets in, then I think Ukraine's his chances are greatly diminished. And if Biden gets re-elected, then I think we'll see a resumption of Western supplies. So in this interim period, this six months, eight months that we have now, Ukraine is on the defensive within its own territory, but it is trying to make gains and demonstrate momentum outside its territory. And it's doing that in, in two ways, really, three ways. One is in the Black Sea, in the maritime area, it's taking the fight to the Russian fleet quite successfully. I think they sunk two ships in February, Russian ships. It's also attacking Russian oil infrastructure because it damages the Russian economy and that damages the Russian war effort. And it is doing these cross-border attacks like we've seen in the last few days in Belgograd. So really, Ukraine is in a holding pattern. It's going to try and demonstrate that momentum outside the country whilst it's on the defensive within the country. Mike Martin from King's College London, thank you very much for the insights. Thank you.